power poles. One of the most innovative and intelligent designs made to solve a major problem for all bass fishermen. How do you keep your boat completely steady in shallow water? In the current or in the wind? These are epic. What if I told you they're also really easy to install? Would you believe me? Check this video out. Today I'm here with Gil and Karina from Fal Marine, and they've allowed me to come and help them out with installing dual power poles on this sub 20 foot nitro. This case was actually a more difficult install because we had to retrofit the jack plate to fit these power poles. But if you have a jack plate that already has the mounts for these brackets, these are actually really easy. You could probably do this whole install in one yeah. to two hours. If you have like a morning or an afternoon in your garage, you can definitely get this thing done. We are going to show you the process from start to finish of the full install of both power poles. Each power pole blade comes with two brackets that mount on top of each other on each side of the jack plate. The ratchet assembly is not going to allow us to have this side bracket to the right height. So Gil went and shaved it down and cut a little spot so it could fit high enough. We want the brackets to sit high enough so when you lean the boat to the left or right, the blades don't dig into the water. This is the hydraulic unit itself. It can be manually controlled from here and is also wireless. Where are we going to mount that thing? Uh, we're going to mount it in the fiberglass storage bin and then uh run all the hoses and wiring into the battery compartment. This is where the owner chose to mount the hydraulic units. Literally, you could have mounted them in the back if you had room, but this is where he felt it was the best place to mount. Really where you mount them is your choice as long as they're solid and in a space where you can actively access and service them. The units come fully prepared with the hydraulic fluid itself, along with all the brackets and associated hardware needed for installation. You will have to bleed these later similar to how you would bleed a brake. You can do that in shop by taking the poles off or you can also do it on the water as they're going to do later on. But first we're going to install this thing. We are making marks for four pilot holes and then we are also going to run a hole saw and go ahead and cut a hole for all the hydraulic lines and the wires themselves. It's four wires, four hoses for both hydraulic units. After the pilot holes were drilled, we polished them off with a countersink bit to ensure there was no further damage to the glass itself while we install these brackets. We dab silicone around each hole, that way when we put the unit and secure it, it will seal and no residual water will leak through the holes later. This thing can be installed with the most basic of tools. Now keep in mind you can mount these anywhere you want and you don't even have to mount them side by side. We just did it that way because now we can run all four wires and all four hoses through one conduit and it's much easier that way. With those in place, we're going to go ahead and install the second bracket here. Gil's got a fancy electric ratcheter, but really all you need to install this is just a ratchet set with an extension. With that bracket mounted, we're ready to take out the second power pole. Yeah, it's pretty light, huh? It's heavy. Yeah, it really is light. It doesn't weigh anything. This pole mounts directly to the bracket on the jack plate with four bolts. Very, very easy to install. Just make sure you have an even tightening of each as you go around. With the power poles mounted to the jack plate and the hydraulic units in place, there's only one thing left to do. Connect all the wiring and hoses. But to do that, we're going to have to run conduits directly through the hole. This might be the most nerve-wracking part of your installation, but as long as you find a nice secure place that you're happy with, installation is fairly easy. We did this with a bimetal hole saw as well, cut right directly through the glass in the frame. We did this right in a spot where there was nothing under there. We made sure there was nothing under that we could accidentally drill into or mess up. That was the cleanest spot right directly under the conduit hosing for the motor itself. And then all the wires and the hydraulic lines go through the conduit that we pre-drilled earlier in this video. All nice and secured, all snug and hooked up. Now we're ready to pour the hydraulic fluid itself. Right now we're honestly almost done. After this we just have to connect four wires, two power and two ground. Yep. Um, basically. I was going to come across here and hook the positive. I was going to do the positives to the battery switch so you could turn them on and off. Um, and then the negatives over to the, over the ground. We have them on the battery switch so they can only go on when the boat's in power. So when it's completely off, there's no way it can accidentally actuate. And then connecting the, the ground to 
the negative end of your battery was fairly easy. These remote controls are also very easy because they're wireless. Like everything was super easy to install. Each unit also came with face plates to mount over the bolts and the brackets next to the jack plate. That installed very easily with just a screwdriver. With that, we're ready to actually test these out. The units won't work appropriately until we fully bleed them, but right now they're installed and far enough along for us to test and make sure they work before we take them on the water to fully bleed out and activate the system. We're controlling the units directly from the hydraulic units themselves with the buttons for the manual control. Later on we'll be installing the dash and the front remote controls. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That pushed your whole push the deck, huh? Yeah. This is sweet. Mission success. Very easy to install. I didn't get on the water to watch them bleed it out, but I get to show you all this. All right, so there we have it. That was the full install. The only thing that has to be done is the bleeding. Now to do that, you can take the poles off up here, or you can simply go out in the water like these two gentlemen are about to do and make sure you get the full extension and handle it there. Your experience, what do you think? I, I think it's pretty easy install. Yeah. With the with the uh, with the right tools and whatnot, it goes pretty pretty easy. Pretty so the, quick. Yeah, it's so all the, bolt together. Uh, the only thing that's nice at the hydrodynamics jack plate makes it a little bit more difficult because we had to modify one of the brackets. But if you're running a Bob's or an Atlas or um, a Slide Master, uh, everything bolts right on. It's all plug and play, as as they say. So it's a pretty easy install, pretty clean. Yeah, because you probably could have gotten installed in half the time if you had a. A jack plate that already had the mounts. Yeah, yeah. If we had the jack plate been... that already had the mounts, it would have been about half the time. We wouldn't have had to support the engine on a hoist and strap it to the to the back of the boat and whatnot, so that it so that we didn't lose that those mounting holes and whatnot. So um, a couple other style jack plates, it, it it would take pretty much half the time. Yeah. So really, yeah. Other than that, really, what it was is you just mounted them. You yeah. ran ports for a few lines, the conduit for the wires, and that was it, right? You mounted the pumps in a, in a spot that you wanted. Yep. Yeah. And that was it. Yep. Yeah. You just yeah, two pumps. That was actually very simple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. when you break it down, it's two pumps, four wires, and, and four lines, and I mean, technically, eight eight bolts of bracket, and the things, and, and it's on. So, if you got half a day in your garage, you can you can you can make it happen. Really, the system is the the strength to benefit ratio of doing a system like that is insane. Like they are totally worth the money. The craftsmanship, I was just impressed by not only how well made they were, but how light they were and how absolutely strong they were. They were really strong. My overall impression of those things, they were absolutely worth every penny. It's the strength to weight ratio of them. They are super strong, super rigid, super inflexible. And like they literally only weigh between 30 and 40 pounds. Like you could, you could pick one of those up out of the box by yourself. I know we've done a few DIY versions here on this channel, mimicking those things because of the sheer awesomeness of the design, but like they don't even compare. That thing is nice. So if you have, if you're wavering on whether or not to get them, I would get them. And if any, if, if like the installation process was the only thing holding you back, I hope this video helps uh, motivate and drive you to possibly take on the project. Cause they are, I want some. Honestly, I'm, I'm con after seeing how easy they were to install, any of us could totally install it on our on any of our boats. So like I would only need like maybe one though. My boat's not nearly as heavy as that 20 foot nitro, but something to think about. If I ever do carry those in our store, they will be in the link in the description part of this video below. If not, I definitely would search for your local retailer to find them. And you, if you need them installed, if you've seen this video and you're local to have a see and you're like, that's nice, but I don't have time for that. Gil and Karina at Foul Marine will definitely do an awesome job of solving for you. Thank you much. Check out Foul Marine. Check us out here on this channel. See you guys out there.